Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I've got my year-end wrap-up of the best of anti-aging for 2018. So you guys know, another year has gone by, which means that we're all another year older. In my case, I turned 56 last summer. Even though I said I was 55 in a video just last week, I guess that the senior moments kind of come with the territory now. But, you know, as we get older, we all want to look the best that we can for the age that we're at. And that's kind of what I experiment a lot with on my channel here on YouTube. And I invite you guys to follow along with me. So in this category, I include everything from in-office procedures to at-home gadgets to at-home skincare that you can do. So we've got a lot to cover today, so let's dig in and get started. So let's start with in-office procedures. I know a lot of people are really curious about a lot of those things. So I'm going to be referencing a lot of other videos in this video, my before and afters of every anti-aging thing that I tried this year. Of course, I've done a video on all of them, so there will be lots of links popping up up here under the I for information. I'll also include all the links in the information box below the video. Probably the number one in-office procedure is going to be Botox. I've been having Botox done for about 10 years now and I can tell you that Botox is really like the one big bang for your buck thing that is worth it. It's relatively affordable and it really does work but it will wear off and it will your wrinkles will come back. So the wearing off is good because if anything goes wrong you know it's going to wear off in a few months or if you don't like the look of it it's going to wear off and you don't have to get it again but if you love it that means that you have to keep updating it and keep getting it every couple of months depending on how long it lasts so generally i get botox in my forehead i get my 11s done and i get a little bit sprinkled up in my forehead area i don't like my whole forehead to be frozen as you can see right now i still have movement in my forehead but i gotta say i spent a lot of this year not having any botox because of some at home devices that I was trying. One of the other big in-office injectables that people love is filler. I didn't do any new filler this year and now this will be the third year in a row that I haven't repeated having any filler done. So my face is completely filler free and it has been for at least a year now. So I have had filler in the past. I really liked one of the ones I got. I was just on the fence on the other one. I had the nasal labial fold filler four and a half years ago now, I want to say, and that filler, Juvederm, lasts about a year. So that one is way worn off. Um, and then the year after that, I had Voluma in my cheeks, and I really love that one. So for me, the recommendation for filler is I love the Voluma. Um, I'm not so big on the nasal labial fold fillers, just because I don't think this area should be like flat, and I think sometimes it's overfilled but I think you can do kind of the same thing by from above by instead putting Voluma in your cheeks and then you get a lift from up there. It also helps with some of the wrinkles under your eyes and things like that. But the one place I have been thinking about filler a lot for 2019 is in my lips. And of course, you know, I've never had filler there. Sometimes I think, eh, maybe I would have a tiny bit put in just the edge of my lips just to plump out those wrinkles. But it's not like it's critical mass and I'm like, oh God, I really want that filler. So may do it, may not do it. Three years ago, I had one Fraxel Dual laser treatment on my face. I haven't done any Fraxels since then. I was going to get my face treated again last winter and I just never made the appointment went in. I do have an appointment now to go in in January and have Fraxel Dual done but not on my face this time I'm having my neck and my chest done because you know I have a ton of sun damage and that really took care of a lot of the brown discolorations on my face and I really loved it. Uh, so when I'm in for the Fraxel on my chest to get rid of a lot of these like age spots and discolorations she's also going to do my neck. I don't have that many discolorations on my neck but I do have a a lot of big horizontal bands and I was thinking of having that laser just to see if that could help to tighten up the neck skin. So talking about my neck, uh, one of the in-office procedures that I did have done this year is called Ull Therapy. I had that done back in April. The two in-office procedures that I had done this year, I didn't pay for. I was talking about having them done at last year's wrap-up video, and I said, yeah, I'm thinking about this Ull Therapy thing, and I'm also thinking about filler for my hands. And then, of course, I got an email from the company that makes both, their PR firm, and they said, hey, we'd like to provide you with those treatments. Even though they were providing it, I was still going to give you guys my 100% honest opinion of how I liked it and if I thought it was effective. It's supposed to really help to tighten and lift the skin and they can't do the front. So it's really just the sides and the jaw. Um, that cost $900. As I said, I didn't pay for it, but the pain associated with it 
was pretty darn rough. Um, I actually couldn't do the whole treatment in one session. It was so painful I had to stop and then come back later for a second session to continue. So I definitely recommend taking a look at the full video to see the before and afters because I took some pretty comprehensive before and after pictures and video. And my basic take on Ulthera is while I think it did something for my neck and I do think that in general my neck looks better than it did before, it doesn't treat the front so the main front wrinkle is still like right there. It tightened up my jaw a tiny bit. Did I think it improved $900 worth plus all the pain? Mm, not really. So I'd give that maybe a 65 to 75 percent approval rating on the Ulthera. Um, let's talk about the hand filler now. Um, so you guys know I went and I had hand filler this year. I had talked about it in my anti-aging roundup and I was like, hmm, I'm thinking about getting hand filler. What do you guys think? Everyone was so supportive, like, yeah, we'd be interested in that. So then I went and had it done and put up the video on that and it was a whole different story. People were like, oh my god, you crossed a line. What are you doing? This is too much. I mean, it's not like I went and had major surgery. It was like hand filler. I feel like I did the check-in review video like a month and a half too soon. At the time that I did that video, it was still like a little lumpy. And the way the Radius works, that's the hand filler. And the reason that that is specifically approved for the hands is that it's not just a hyaluronic acid filler. It actually has these little like calcium balls in it that are wrapped in a gel. Over time, the gel dissolves and the little calcium things cause collagen formation. So it can be a little lumpy to start. And when I did the review, there were still a few lumps, which I was saying at that time, boy, I really hope that these, um, you know, go down. And sure enough, they did. So I'm happier with it now and going forward than I was. It was $1,500 for both hands. So 750 worth of filler into each hand. There's a lot of space in there. You have to use a lot of filler to have an effect and your hand hands are very, very sensitive. And so they puffed up. My hands were achy and sore. And if you're a person who does a lot with your hands, um, a lot of work on the computer, a lot of gardening, if you play tennis, anything where you have to grip, it really is difficult. Like it is even hard opening a jar, you know, it made me feel like instead of my hands being 55, uh, it felt like they were 90. When I look at my hands on video and when I'm swatching and when I'm doing close-ups of them, I think they definitely do look 50% better. This is supposed to last a year or two. So, you know, I'm happy with it now. Okay. So that is all the in-office procedures from this year. So let's move on to at-home gadgets. Since we're talking about the hands, I did finish early up in the year my derma roller experiment, which I did on my hands. I had derma rolled them for an entire year, hoping to see whether derma rolling was worth it or not to do. I'm very skeptical of derma rolling. It makes me nervous. I don't like the idea of poking holes or, you know, since it's rolling, ripping holes in your face. It just wasn't for me. Every time I did it, I didn't like it. It hurt my hands. The skin of my hands was then inflamed and irritated for the next couple of days. I felt it made my hands look older instead of younger. And after a year of doing it, I was like, okay, that's it experiment with derma rolling done. So like I said, only did it on my hands, not my face. If you do it on your face and you love it, more power to you. You know, I'm all about people finding what works for them. Another couple of gadgets that I tried in 2018 were the Tria Age Defying Lasers. The company sent me the Smooth Beauty Laser, which is the bigger model that retails for $495. And I purchased the Age Defying Eye Wrinkle Correcting Laser. That's $295. And I tested them both side by side. The the eye wrinkle laser for eight weeks, which is the prescribed amount every single night on one eye, just on the crow's feet. And I use the Smooth Beauty laser on the rest of my face, including the crow's feet on the other eye. That one you use for five nights for five nights a week for three months. So it was quite a commitment during that time. I wasn't getting any Botox or any fillers. And you know, as I said before, I didn't have any fillers, but I wasn't getting anything else done to my face. I wasn't changing anything in my skincare. I didn't enjoy Enjoy the process. I found that for most of the three months, my skin was inflamed, it was irritated, it was red. So when I did the video and I looked at the before and after pictures, I felt like I could see a little bit of a change in the wrinkles of my crow's feet, and I could see a little bit of a change in the tone of my skin, but it was maybe a 20, 10 to 20 percent difference. For me, it, it didn't seem to be enough that I wanted to really, you know, mess around with that thing 20 minutes a night with the pain and the swelling and all the stuff for the big one. But I felt like the Little Tria eye laser was definitely the way to go if you wanted to try an at-home laser because I did feel like I saw 
probably about the same amount of results with that one around the eyes as with the big one because it's literally like a minute or two a night and actually during that time that I was using the Tria I had also stopped using my new face for that three months and what I noticed most in those pictures is that I could see the difference in not using my new face so the gadget that I recommend still this year is the new face microcurrent device in 2018 I did do a trial with the two different uh, New Face Trinity heads. I got the ELE attachment and I also got the red light attachment. That's called the wrinkle reducing attachment. I use those each for a month or two to um, see what they could do in addition to what the New Face did and I did a video on that as well so linked here and here of course. And I was really really impressed with the ELE attachment. I think that one was a hundred percent worth the money and did the most amazing things for my hooded eyes. So if you do have the hooded eyes and you do want to try to get some more or lift on them definitely get the new face trinity with the ele attachment the red light attachment i was not as impressed with i was kind of unable to really use it and do the full trial on it because unfortunately it's a flashing light but i couldn't use it on my neck it gave me irritation i couldn't really use it on most of my face because the flashing lights made me feel like i was going to have a seizure didn't love the red light attachment on the new face but absolutely love the ele and still of course love the new face trinity and the new face mini. All right, now it's time to move into skincare. And of course, you guys know if you watch me at all that what I consider to be the best one-two punch for anti-aging in skincare is tretinoin and sunscreen. So I've been using Retin-A slash tretinoin for six years now. I also started using sunscreen religiously six years ago. And I think that the combination of those two at, from a topical standpoint have had the most profound effect on my skin. I did another Retin-A update last winter. I'm not gonna be doing one this winter. We'll post a link to that if you wanna see what Retin-A can do for your skin over five years now it's been another year that I'm on it and I'm gonna say my skin just keeps getting better and better you know I am six years older and I look younger instead of older it is the one thing that is proven with lots and lots of research to work so there's really not that much new in tretinoin the big thing that happened with retin-a this year is that I switched how I get it prior to 2018 I was getting my tretinoin like most other people which was to go to my doctor my dermatologist ask for a prescription have it filled at my local pharmacy, then fight with my insurance company about whether or not they were going to cover it. Sometimes it was covered, sometimes it wasn't. Then I discovered this new service called Curology. This is like a monthly mail service where you start off by uploading some pictures of yourself to their website, answering a skincare quiz, and then they match you up with a skincare provider who then custom mixes up your formulation. So if you're there for wrinkles, yours will have tretinoin in it. And then they'll put in two other active ingredients, but they have all different strengths. So they can start you off at a really low strength to help your skin acclimate to it so you don't have irritation. And then they can bump you up over time to a stronger strength. If you'd like to try Curology for the first month for free, there is a link in the information box for you to try it. If you're using any kind of retinoid, you should also be then making a commitment to wearing sunscreen every day because in order to keep all those age spots and all those new wrinkles and everything from forming, you have to use sunscreen in conjunction with it so that you don't, you know, cause more sun damage. So every year I do a big roundup of sunscreens, mineral sunscreens, because those are the ones that don't irritate my so sensitive skin. And this year I was so fortunate that I found a new winner in the realm of sunscreen. And that one was the Make Prem UV Defense Me Cream. And this is awesome. This is an SPF 50 with a PA++++, which means it gives you the maximum UVA protection with the maximum UVB protection. And this is a beautiful sunscreen that goes on clear. It doesn't give you any white cast. It doesn't uh, affect the wear of your makeup. It doesn't make your, wrink your makeup settle in your wrinkles, which a lot of thicker sunscreens do. So this is an awesome sunscreen. And then right after I finished doing that video, I saw that Make Prem also made another one called UV Defense Me Lotion. And so I gave this a try and I like this even better than this. There are links for these in the information box as well. When I find a new sunscreen that's like the winner for that year, I am always still using my older sunscreen. So I do still use the Australian Gold Botanical Face Tinted SPF 50. That is an awesome one from that was the winner two years ago, along with the Hydropeptide SPF 50. Through the course of 2018, I actually found two more really fabulous sunscreens. 
Designs. The Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30 and the Elta MD UV Elements Broad Spectrum SPF 44. All right, so last time I did a skincare routine update was over the summer. I'm going to do one in the next couple of weeks. I'm going on vacation. I will do it right after I get back. My Timeless Vitamin C Serum is one of the most important parts of my skincare routine. It's an antioxidant. It scavenges free radicals in your skin that are caused by exposure to the sun and pollution. So that is a great thing to use in your skincare. This is pretty much the only one that I would use for a long time because it really has to be formulated exactly right in order for it to even have a chance of getting in your skin, being stable, and doing something. But there is a little competitor to it this year. A company called Maylove came out with one called the Glow Maker, and these two are very, very similar in formulation. Um, the difference is, is that this one has 20% L-ascorbic acid, this one has 15% L-ascorbic acid. They both contain ferulic acid and vitamin E, which are critical in keeping the L-ascorbic acid more stable and also making it more effective. So they're both great. They're both at the same price point. I have a discount code for both. I'll put my discount codes right here along with links in the information box for you. Um, so they're both great products. This one's $28. This one's $24.95. I have $5 off on this. I have 10% off on this. Both free shipping. So win-win, but those are my top two vitamin C serums that I recommend. The big news is that one of the mass market skincare companies, L'Oreal, has launched a C serum that is actually a viable product. So this just came in PR a couple weeks ago and I have been trying it out. It's their Revitalift Derm Intensives 10% Pure Vitamin C Concentrate. So theirs uses 10% vitamin C. It's fragrance free, which I love to see. It's mainly in a base of silicones and propylene glycol and that is an absorption enhancer. And when there's no water, you don't have to worry about it oxidizing. The vitamin C will be dissolved by the water in your skin and so then we don't have to worry about the stability so this will be you know shelf stable for a while so instead of being a clear watery liquid like these guys are this is more like a cream it's a really nice you know kind of elegant solution to the vitamin c serum problem so if you're looking for a vitamin c serum from the drugstore that would be a good option to try out probably the biggest change to my skincare routine this year is that i was able to add in a glycolic acid peel once a week and the product that i use for that is the drunk elephant tl LC Sukari Baby Facial and I really love this. It's like a 10 minute put it on and then rinse it away AHA BHA peel. So I like it. It doesn't irritate my skin. It seems fairly effective. The day after I do it my skin is nice and smooth and exfoliated and I really like this. And then of course people were looking for a less expensive alternative. The Ordinary makes a very similar product. This is their AHA 30% and BHA 2% peeling solution. So these are kind of comparable. I did use this. I didn't like it as much as this. This, my skin was just a little bit red and a little bit irritated. You know, after I use this, my skin doesn't have any red spots. It doesn't feel irritated. I can't see any actual peeling going on though, but it does look kind of clearer and smoother in the morning. When I used this, I actually had some actual peeling going on like for the next couple of days. I feel like this one might have been a little bit more effective, plus my skin was irritated. I did have some red splotches when I finished using this, and it's kind of a creepy thing to use. It's the color of blood. I don't know why you would make it this color, but I mean literally you rub this all over your face, and so you just look like you're bleeding from the face, which which is not lovely, but I suppose they're trying to give you the impression that you're doing like the vampire facial. So, you know, they threw in the gimmick. I'm not happy they did that, but if you're looking for a much less expensive option for a weekly peel, this is a pretty good one because um, it's like $6.95 versus I think $68 for the Drunk Elephant. So that's my entire wrap up of anti-aging for 2018. I think it was a good year. It's always good to find out what works and what doesn't work so that I can share that information with you guys and help you to maybe better use your anti-aging dollars, focus in on what are the things that are really gonna help us and have the best bang for the buck. So I hope you found the video helpful and informative. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So thanks so much for watching. You know, I always appreciate your time. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.